So one of the things I've been working on um, lately with MarkEdit has been the ability to interact directly uh, with individual ILS systems. And to that end, I've been working in MarkEdit to integrate with OCLC's um, web services. Uh, been working on this for a little while. Um, it showed up in the uh, development of the uh, automatic generation for uh, call numbers um, and the recently added uh, fast headings generation. Uh, this release includes integration with the newly released OCLC's uh, metadata APIs, which allows for the direct integration with um, WorldCat. And so that's in allowing me to build tools um, to allow for the, the batch setting, um, updating, and deletions of an institution's holdings, uh, the ability to inter interact directly with, with WorldCat. Um, and update records, uh, create records, um, and eventually um, in the next round uh, to work with uh, local data records. So in order to work with uh, OCLC's web services, um, one of the things you need to get from OCLC is, is a set of um, API keys. And in order to use OCLC's, the OCLC integrations in MarkEdit, you need to tell MarkEdit what those, those keys are. Um, that happens by setting it in the preferences. Uh, I've set aside a, a new tab in here um, for storing um, OCLC's API settings. There are a number of settings, two, two keys. One is the OCLC search API key. Um, this is used primarily for querying um, against the, uh, the WorldCat database, uh, primarily using um, their SRU interface. Um, OCLC's metadata API key and then the uh, three elements that follow um, are all related to interacting um, in a, a read-write fashion with WorldCat. Um, so in order to use the tools that uh, have been developed in the Mark Edit, uh, you have to get those keys um, and you have to validate those keys. So um, let's go through both steps. So if you want to get a key to be able to interact with, with a, uh, use a mark edit to interact with OCLC's either search or metadata services, I have to request a key. And there's a link here to the OCLC developers network um, that will allow you to requ request a, a developer's key um, and request specific keys. Uh, once you have a key, uh, you come back to here and you enter that key into the um, preferences box and uh, uh, save those settings. Um, from here, in order to activate any of the, the resources in MarkEdit that uh, require a key to, to function, uh, you have to validate these keys. Now the keys are stored um, in the MarkEdit application. When you put them here, they're um, encrypted, so they uh, can't be read. Um, and for the purposes of, of doing um, uh, recordings like this, uh, as well as um, uh, instruction, the keys are masked so that you can't see them if you look at them on the screen. If you want to see them, you can um, uncheck this box and it'll, it'll check that box and it'll allow you to, to see the keys. So that, oh, excuse me, allow you to see the keys so you can actually see the data that, that, that is in the box. So I want to validate these keys so that I can actually use um, some of the tools. So I will go ahead and run the validation. So MarkEdit will do two validations. The first one is on the search API. Um, it's doing a simple SRU query using the um, search API key and see it knows what it should be getting back. If it gets back the, the correct data, then it knows the key is valid and it goes ahead and validates the key and it turns the back um, green so that you know that the key has been validated. Next we'll look at the metadata keys for a number of operations. With the metadata key you have to include your OCLC institution code as well as a four letter holding code. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and include one that's attached to um, my particular key here. And I'll go ahead and run it. And what this does is it uses one of the, uh, the, the functions that is uh, made available through the metadata API to pull um, one of the, the test records that exist in, in OCLC's WorldCat database. So my keys are valid. Um, because these keys are valid now, there's a bit set that tells MarkEdit that um, 
it can go ahead and, and enable um, whatever OCLC integration functions are there. Let's say that the key wasn't valid, so I'm going to go ahead and just throw a, a character in front of my metadata key, and I'm going to go ahead and revalidate. Uh, the search key is going to pass, because the search key is still valid. And I'm going to go ahead and run this against uh, my codes. And you'll see that this time, um, the key didn't validate, and it gives you a reason why. Uh, it says it can't validate your metadata keys. The return back was uh, 401, bad request, um, and the description of that was um, the request requires HTTP authentication, and the authentication failed. Uh, mark edit marks these in red to tell you that the, these are the elements that um, need to be uh, evaluated um, and fixed before it can go forward. And any, um, any uh, tools that require the use of these four keys uh, will be disabled until this has been corrected and the key has been validated um, so that uh, you can and, and passes validation at which point those those elements will be re-enabled. Uh, part of the reason for doing that and providing this validation is that um, uh, I, I'm thinking that it'll hopefully um, help to, uh, to uh, uh, reduce the number of, of, of troubleshooting that we have to do around this particular um, feature, uh, specifically since OCLC themselves are still uh, working out some of the uh, some of the ways that they want their APIs to work. So, anyways, that's uh, how uh, you enable uh, and test and validate uh, the new OCLC uh, Mark Edit integrations um, using the OCLC APIs. Uh, I will likely in the very near future um, provide some uh, uh, video tutorials on some of the new um, actual integration tools that have been uh, placed into the application.